Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much for coming, uh, everyone, and thanks very much for having me. Um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm here really for one reason, and it's not, uh, as I was informed on Twitter last night, because I'm a white supremacist. Um, it's a very angry man on Twitter last night. He was furious that I would dare to come here and, in his words, speak for Muslim women. He says, I don't know what Muslim women want. In fact, he knows what Muslim women want, and apparently they want to be segregated. He hasn't really spotted the irony in what he's saying. Um, in arguing about which one of us is better qualified to speak on behalf of Muslim women, which, for the record, I'm really not trying to do. But, but if I have to, I'm pretty sure that his imaginary friend is outranked by my vagina. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if I am here to speak for anything, uh, I'd like to start by saying that I'm here to speak for dictionaries. Because the word equality has one definition. And that definition is not about different seating areas, it's not about the front or the back of the bus, it's not about saying that civil partnerships are kind of basically the same thing as a marriage. Equality means one thing, it means equality, it means the same. It means having exactly the same rights, not similar or overlapping rights, but exactly the same rights. And I'm also here to speak on behalf of me. Because I want to go to these lectures and I don't want to sit in some women's ghetto at the back of these lectures. And as a matter of fact, I also want to go to men's clubs and golf clubs and any other event that I want to go to around this country. And when I go on holiday, I want to go wherever the heck I want as well and not be expected to be chaperoned around by male relatives or told to cover up on beaches in the wrong country. But I am also here, in fairness, to speak on behalf of others at the same time that this man was accusing me of all sorts of things on Twitter. I had another message on Facebook from a young Muslim woman who said, I want to thank you for going to this event and I want to tell you that if I could, I would come with you. But I can't come with you because if I do, I just don't know how my father will react. For all I know, her father is the same man on Twitter <laughs> calling me a white supremacist. So I think it's really important that we're here. And I think we should remember as well that there are so many people who would love to join us and who simply can't. In some cases because they are trapped in these communities where segregation and misogyny is standard. Also because in this environment and this climate economically there are just people who don't have the time and the resources to be here who can't get the babysitting who can't get the support from their disability living allowance from all the other things that are being ripped away at the same time that our universities have decided rather than supporting students and supporting young people breaking through all these problems struggling with tuition fees instead they are going to pander to the wealthy voices of, of powerful political and religious institutions from overseas and uh, yes yeah, so I want to thank you all for coming and standing up to it and I want to finish as you would imagine uh, you know a well-known and reputable white supremacist would by quoting the words of a black woman <laughs> and I have this written above my desk and it applies not just to this struggle but to so many that we go through uh, because we are constantly in this struggle facing up against people who call us every name under the sun who will hound us on the internet and in real life who will threaten us and we know that we have comrades who can't be with us today because they are quite literally dead and these are the words of Harriet Tubman and for those of you uh, who don't know, Harriet Tubman was a slave uh, in America and she escaped and she spent the rest of her life dedicated it to helping other slaves to, to escape. And I hope you'll take these words as a piece of encouragement in our apparently never-ending fight. She said, If you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If they're shouting after you, Keep going. Don't ever stop. Keep going. Thank you.